Disneyland Paris, just like every Disney resort in the world, has been going through change since its opening in 1992. Time brings new expansions, attractions and experiences, but sometimes it requires old ones to be taken down and replaced. Both parks have had many instances where this and more is observable, so today come along with me as I go over hidden remnants of old attractions in Disneyland Paris. Oh boy! Before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as I upload weekly videos on theme parks from the past to the future. That said, let's dig in. Let's go into the Disneyland Park and explore our first defunct attraction and its remnants in the resort. For this, we need to turn a left at the end of Main Street into the wildest land in the wilderness and walk to pretty much the other side of the land. Here you will find Pueblo Trading Post, but walk a little further in the direction of the rivers of the far west. In this huge body of water, guests can currently find one boat roaming around, also known as the Molly Brown, but it wasn't always this deserted. When the park opened, you could watch many types of boats exploring the waters around Big Thunder Mountain, from big paddle boats to very small ones, and this is where we find the first attraction in our list. The River Row keelboats used to be found all around Frontierland, filled with people in their two levels. You'd board the boats via the loading dock, hidden between two giant rocks, and shielded from passing river boats. Once aboard a coyote or the raccoon, they would take you around the tour of the rivers of the far west, giving you a closer look to the wildlife, natural beauties, and secrets of the wild west. The tour would begin as you pass Old Joe with his barking dog before turning around and getting closer to Wilderness Island for a closer view of its waterfalls and wildlife. The erupting geysers blast into the air ahead as you pass the majestic Rainbow Arch and pick up speed to pass through the Thunder Mesa town. After a full tour, you arrive safely back at Smuggler's Cove. This attraction was very unique, but due to its low capacity and large number of cast members needed to run everything smoothly, the keelboats began fading away from the park to the end of the 1990s. But then, out of the blue, the ride was completely refurbished for the 2006 season and reopened in 2007 as cast members needed a French boating license. Here, it ran for several years, with some lower attendance days remaining closed. But it was in 2009 when it closed once again, but this time for good. Today, you can still see the loading and unloading station, a lot of the theming, and even a keelboat himself. The Molly Brown offers the best views of this defunct attraction, but walking to the old station is also possible, which offers this look to the past of the park. This keelboat is sometimes used because it's one of the ways to get people riding Big Thunder Mountain from the island in case of an evacuation. Now that's one experience I wouldn't mind having. Before jumping out of the waters from this western river, there's one more attraction that we need to explore. Similarly to the keelboats, this ride would give guests a completely different tour of the rivers of the far west. May I present the Indian Canoes. These were a unique attraction in Frontierland and all of Disneyland Paris because it used to be the only one that was propelled by the visitors themselves. Guests would board 11 meter long canoes with a maximum total capacity of 20 visitors. Two guides, dressed as pioneers, would accompany them, one at the front that motivated the guests and the other at the back would steer, ensuring that the canoe goes to the right place. After a short training on the proper use of the paddles, the boat can then start the 20 minute voyage from what will later be called Geronimo Landing at the back of Indian Village. The canoes are not exclusive to Disneyland Paris, as many of the Disney parks offer a similar experience, such as Disneyland and even Shanghai Disneyland. Unfortunately, it did not last long in the Parisian resort, and that was due to a lot of reasons, from the dependence on the weather to the extremely low capacity and big amount of cast members necessary to run the ride. Because of this, it closed just over two years after opening as the park needed to cut costs and allocate investments to higher capacity rides. 
The loading dock and the Indian village surrounding it evolved into the Pocahontas Indian village in June 1996 and to this day exists now with a different name. But you can still see remnants of this long gone attraction. If you enter the playground and go all the way to the back, you will see the loading area where the canoes will be brought in and then loaded. Who would have thought that this small water passage once was the entrance to an attraction? But that's not all. If you visit or stay at Davy Crockett's Ranch, Disneyland Paris's campground, and look around, you might find the canoes themselves. With this, we can finally get out of the water and go to the other side of the park over at Fantasyland. When the park opened, it became apparent that new capacity had to be created to accommodate all the guests. For this, many small projects were created because, remember, the resort wasn't exactly making a lot of money. Examples of said projects were the storybook land behind Fantasyland that features two rides, Lupé de Conte Fe and Casey Jr. And the next defunct attraction, the pirouettes of the Old Mill. In 1992, when the park opened, the Old Mill, inspired by Disney's Silly Symphonies from 1937, was featured and had a counter service window where ice cream, sandwiches, beverages, complete picnic baskets, and figures inspired by It's a Small World were sold. Imagineers then picked up a never built concept for Disneyland from the 50s and incorporated it into the existing counter service as a Ferris wheel was added to the back of the old mill. The ride had eight buckets that could take up to four people each, or a small maximum of 32 people. It would then take from four to five turns. Because of the very low capacity, the queues would sometimes reach several hours long, outdoors, and when the experience didn't make up for the lost time, visitors would often leave disappointed. From 1999, only six years after the building, the old mill ferris wheel would close and open depending on the attendance, but in 2002, the final spin was spun and the ride closed for good. Since then, several of the elements of the ride were taken down over time, including the buckets, but to this day, you can still walk around what was once the queue and even the loading area, which is now a lovely smoking area. Or was? I don't know, those things keep on moving from time to time. You can also still see the arm of the ferris wheel and the holes that would hold the buckets. The railroad offers a great view at this defunct ride. For our last remnant of a long gone past, we need to walk just a little into Discoveryland as this is where we will find the next attraction. Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast is a ride that has made its way into many Disney parks around the world and out of almost every single time, it took the place of another attraction. Disneyland Paris was one of these. You see, before Buzz ever set foot in Discoveryland, there used to be an amazing attraction that actually fits with the theme of the land, and that was Le Visionarium, also known as the Timekeeper when it was cloned for the Magic Kingdom in Tokyo Disneyland. Le Visionarium was a Circle Vision film that featured many special effects a 360 film and audio animatronics. Guests would come along for an adventure through time as the timekeeper itself would send his robot Nine Eye back in time as he transmits everything around her with her nine eyes, hence the 360 views around the guests. Nine Eye would make her way through time from dinosaurs to the Renaissance and the future featuring some historical characters along the way, such as two of the people that inspired Discoveryland, Hey G. Wells and Jules Verne. The attraction unfortunately closed in September 2004 to make way for Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast, and with that, the Visionarium came to an end. But there still is to this day an easter egg or homage, if you will, to this amazing 360 circle vision show and that is in the actual ride itself, where many people are shooting every target around them, or at least trying. If you know exactly when and where to look, you might spot Nine Eye herself, right at the beginning of the ride between the robot and the dog. She's still there, in the dark, 
by herself. Disney Imagineers like to leave something behind to honor what was replaced, and I am glad this was the case with Le Visionarium. Well, that's it for today's video. Did you know all of these easter eggs and remnants? Which of these defunct attractions would you like to see return? Let me know in the comments. You can find my socials on the link down below. And now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.